Good morning, everybody. Welcome to chapel. I need to set this down. It's actually called a flight risk. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to chapel. Today is a great day because we are here to hear God's word and sing his praise. Today is the start of something awesome. Today we start the story. We've been talking about how I love to tell the story. We've been talking in our chapel about going and telling his story. Today we start our journey through the story. Our journey through the story is going to start with Mr. B sharing about creation. When God made the world, can he design everything perfectly? We are going to hear about that from Mr. B. But Mr. Whitney is not at the piano today. Because if we're going to be talking about creation, we should also be singing about creation. And there is a very special song that I know that my child care friends know that helps us remember what happened all the way back in the beginning when God made everything. He made the seas, the forests, the mountains, the sky, and even one of my favorite animals, the hippopotamode. We're going to sing the hippo song to start with. Uh, this is a standing up song, so I need everybody to stand up. And I need you to raise both hands in the air very quietly, stretching fingers, stretching fingers. And now you're going to put one hand, your right hand in, and your left hand on top of it. And you're going to bring it in. And they're going to go to the first slide of the music, and we're going to take a deep breath. We go like this. In the beginning, God made the seas and the forests filled with trees. He made the mountains up so high and above it all, God placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere just to show how much he cares. In between, he had lots of fun. He made a hippo that weighed a ton. Hip, hip, hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made the bus. Hip, hip, hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made the bus. You know, I really love my hippopotamus voice. And I think you could also share your hippopotamus voice. I think we're going to sing this again, but we're going to turn it up just a smidgen. So, right hand up, left hand up, stretching fingers, forward, tap three times, bring it in, deep breath. <gasps> in the beginning God made the seas, and the forest filled with trees. He made the mountains up so high, and above it all God placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere. Just to show how much he cares, in between he had lots of fun. He made a hippo that weighed a ton. Hip, 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 All right. Once more. All hippopotamodes, be prepared to go faster than the average hippopotamode. Hands up. Stretch. Forward, tap three times, bring in deep breath. In the beginning, God made the seas, and the forest filled with trees, he made the mountains up so high, and above it all, God placed the sky, God's fingerprints are everywhere, just to show how much he cares in between, he had lots of fun, he made a hippo that weighed a ton, hip 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 that was super fun. Now it's time for chapel. We're going to stay standing while Asher leads us in our liturgy. In the name of the Father, 
and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God's story with us began a long time ago when a world was created and God formed man from dust of the earth. And he looked at all of his creation and he said that it was very good. Sin entered the world and left mankind hopeless. But God promised a savior. For those who are sorry for their sins, he gives us his holy word. Jesus was born in a manger, lived a perfect and humble life, and died on a cross to show God's love for you and me. Jesus rose from the dead, and in him we are forgiven our sins and given a new life to live forevermore. Now filled with God's love, we have a command from God. You may have a seat. Sound people, if you want to get that next slide, we'll start there. 
Okay, I, I'm super excited because this is an area that I love to teach is the whole creation account. And to be honest, when I first took this on as a chapel message, I thought, yes, I can't wait. Except that it usually takes me four weeks to teach the seven days of creation, which I know is surprising, but there's so much in it to unpack that I thought, how am I going to do this in five minutes? Because usually, you know, the attention span of everybody in here, five minutes is good. So I'm going to do my best today, but sixth grade, you're going to have to help me out because we just went through this. You're going to be able to display your knowledge to all around and help me out. All right, well, first of all, before I have you go back that slide, before I start uh, with the days of the creation, I just want to talk about that our Lord doesn't have a beginning. And I know that's hard for us to understand, but in order for our story to come into play, he made a beginning for us. And that may be hard for you to understand, but our story is limited, okay? And every story has a beginning. And I honestly, I hate the word story to be, to be true because it almost sounds like our Bible is made up, it's fictional, and it's not. So in my class, I use the word account because then that means that we're talking about something historically true, something that happened. So let's start. Let's go to that next slide. All right, day one. All right, sixth grade. Can you tell besides what you see on there, and I wasn't very obvious in some of these, what happened on day one? All right, Nixon, tell me. Light. And what was the other thing you said? He separated the light from the darkness, okay, which then created something that we have and use, which is time. God started time on day one. Now, if anybody pays attention to God in scripture, God is a God of organization. God is a God of planning. And I always tell this to kids. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing ever occurred to God? Now, think about that for a minute. God never had a new idea. God already knew what was going to happen on these days and why he did it a certain way. That's up to God. But God gives us these first days to give us a basis for our seven-day week, which we still use today. So, light. And you know what? The cool thing about this, kids, there's no light source other than the energy that God creates on day one. There's no sun, there's no moon, there's no stars. There's just light. All right, next slide. All right, sixth grade, what happened on day two? Riker, I'm just gonna pick on you, your hand's not up. The, okay, so the water was essentially there on day one, but God separated the waters from the waters of what he put in, in between. Daisy, not yet, that's day three. I'll pick on you for day three. Avery, the sky, we call it what in science? Atmosphere, right? So God prepares this world for life by providing an atmosphere, and that's what he did. Also, do you know that our planet is the only one in the known universe that has liquid water on it? That's pretty interesting, something we need, right? You'd say we need water to survive, correct? All right, next slide. All right, Daisy, now you can say, what happened on day three? The land, Bella, anything else besides land that you see on that photo? Plants, yes, absolutely. So for all those creatures to eat, to have some kind of food source. Hey kids, did you know that all animals in the perfect world were vegetarian? Nothing was eating each other. That would have been something that happened after sin. So even the lion was eating plants. Now they hadn't been created yet, but don't you think that's a beautiful picture right there? I think that would be an awesome place to be. All right, let's go to the next slide. Now, God always kind of undersells himself in Scripture when he talks about that he made a greater light and a lesser light. And then he says, and he made the stars also. You guys have, if you ever study the universe, it's incredibly immense. It's huge. There's so many large things out there. There's actually a star called Betelgeuse in our known area of the galaxy that if you put it in the center of our solar system, it would stretch out past Mars. So the first four planets of our solar system would be engulfed within that one star. So there's some big, big boys and big girls out there in the universe that God created. But a lot of kids always ask me, hey, why did he create these things if we're never going to be able to go there? Well, that's when you read scripture. God says he made them so we can tell our signs of seasons and time. It's our timekeeping pieces. And by the way, they're very precise mathematically. So God is also using mathematics. And I'm not just saying that because I'm the math teacher. 
Math is a universal language. It can be spoken anywhere. Of course, God created it, which means it's not bad, kids. God made it. It is. I agree. All right, next slide. All right, now I chose this slide because if you look really close, you know, when we hear about the days of creation, we see all these animals, we think about animals that are here and now. But did you know there are some animals that were around that are not here anymore? Do you see one up there? What do you see there, Ethan? Yeah, the alligator thing, okay? Does anybody know what the technical name of that one is? The you dinosaur aficionados? Do I have a dinosaur person? Oh, Asher, what is it? Asher said it's a Mosasaurus. He is correct, all right. We have a very incredibly large reptilian creature. We would call them sea dragons today, and yes, they did exist because we find their bones in the ground, all right, and known as fossils. So, yeah, very cool. Um, but I'm always amazed at just God speaking creatures into existence with his word. Now, how powerful of a God do you have to be to do that? Much more than we understand, right? All right, day six. Anybody see a creature in there that you might not expect to see on day six? You do, don't you? Presley. What'd you say? Dinosaur, right? What, you mean God made the dinosaurs? I thought they lived millions of years ago. Well, that's what your books teach you. It's not what the Bible teaches you. The Bible says that God created all land-breathing, air-breathing, land air-breathing animals. That would include the dinosaurs, which that's a more modern word anyway. We called them dragons for a number of years, and they, yes, they did exist. And if you look in the left corner with the light shining down, different than everything else, what do you see? Why? A human. Now, you know what his name was, right? What was his name? Adam. I'll give you a hint. Not a very creative name. If anybody knows what Adam means, it means man. Wow. All right. So the first guy was named man. Well, that's pretty appropriate, right? Now, I don't have Eve on there. She comes on that same day. But what I want to tell you is when we talk about his story, it's also our story. It's the story of humanity. God created us last. And he did it in a special way. Created us with his hands. He breathed his breath into us, giving us a living soul that is different than other creatures. And yeah, we were supposed to be perfect. We failed. But let's go to day seven. I want to talk about that before I go on. What did God do? Well, did he, did he kick back in a spiritual lazy boy and put up his feet and take it easy and take a nap on that day? Hardly. Noah, what did he do on that? What does it mean that God rested? He, was, he finished, right? He stopped creating in the way that he had done before. By the way, that day seven is for us. Later on, they call it the Sabbath day. Sabbath day is a day of spiritual rest. It's a rest from the things that you normally do so you can focus on God. And there's your seven-day week, which I got to tell you guys, nobody in science, the science world, understands why we have a seven-day week. They can't figure it out. They can figure out how we get a year, a month, a day, but they can't figure out where we got a seven-day week from. Well, I'll tell you where it came from. God. Okay, it's pretty obvious. All right, now, these next slides go to the next one. I was honestly supposed to cover in the history Bible um, all the way from creation to Noah. Not happen, okay? I would be here way too long. So I put a road up there because we all know that Adam and Eve fell into sin. They made a choice. And so now we're on this road. And if you look at that road, that road is windy, right? You can't see what's around the bend. And I'm sorry, but as humans, we're limited in what we know. And sometimes there are things that happen in our lives because of sin. And we don't know what direction God's taking us and why we're on it and where we're going. But if you go to the next slide, God has a different perspective. What do you see in that perspective that's different from the road previous? Yes, Riker. God can see all of it at the same time. So he knows where that's headed. And that's headed to the last slide. You guys will get that last slide for me. You see the cross in the distance. God had a way for us to get out of our situation, for our debts to be paid. He entered history through his son, Jesus Christ, who took on the flesh that we were given and all its limitations so that he could die for us, take our debt, 
so that we can be debt free. Now that's the gospel, my friends. And it's not just simply Jesus dying on the cross. It's Jesus paying and living the life perfectly and paying for our sins to set us free so we can go back to what it was during those first few days of creation. And that's what you're going to hear throughout this whole year. Every single account that is taking place is going to point towards our need for Jesus Christ and what he does for us. And that still applies to you today. You know, the Bible's written, but you're part of that story just as I am. And what a wonderful thing it will be to finally see God face to face. All right, if you will pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us life. Thank you so much for creating us. And even though we're fallen away in sin, you are still there to guide and lead us. Please lead us today in all we say and do. Let us be excellent Christian models of our faith so that we can display that faith to others and lead them to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Mr. P, for sharing about the entire creation in 10 minutes or less. What a feat. Uh, we are now going to collect our offering. Does anybody know where the September offerings are going? Nice and loud, Ella Anderson. Jesus, our Savior Lutheran School, the Lutheran School in uh, the Winnebago Tribe area in eastern Nebraska where Mrs. T teaches all the kids about Jesus. So we are offering money. We'll go there. Uh, so while the offering is being collected, we will sing Acolytes and Ushers. Please go to the plates.
Blessed Lord, you have caused the whole Bible to be written for us and learn your word and your work in our lives. Grant that we may hear, read, study, and embrace your word. That by the patience of comfort of your grace, we hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life and go and tell his story. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Please join me in Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you may keep me this day also from sin and the presence of evil, that the Holy Spirit may guide me in the way of life, and that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may be acceptable in your sight, O God says, go and make disciples of all nations. God says, you will be my witness to the ends of the earth. God says, let your light shine before others that they may praise your Father in heaven. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless our days in his peace. Let me thank our leaders today, Asher and the 7th and 8th in the back, Mr. Whitney and Mr. B. S.T. Um, then I don't know if you noticed, on Sunday we talked about creation. Mr. B talked about creation and you probably talked about it a little bit in your classrooms. And hopefully you can be talking about it at home with mom and dad too, maybe at supper. Um, but hopefully you can be going through the Bible with them, too. Um, Do you know we have a fundraiser going on right now? Anybody know that? You guys know what it's going to, what we're raising funds for? Do you know, Coleman? Uh, I know it's going for one family. Yes. All right, so we have a swamp over on the way to the South Playground. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's always water there. And we're gonna get that fixed up and then maybe get some other playground things. And then, yes, there's a family. Their name is Arvid and Jane Warnicky. They both have been really sick lately, so they have a lot of medical expenses. So 10% or whatever we, what we raise is gonna go towards them. Um, yeah, so we have a couple weeks to be raising money for that. So, uh, Otherwise, we have a couple students who are caught being good. Oliver Spulock, please come up. 
for encouraging your brother Matthias to come to school. Did you have Oliver? Oliver Spulock for helping a friend find a spoon for a snack. Good job, buddy. Colton Coover for picking up paper towels in the bathroom. Ava Baumgartel for stepping up as a leader, helping the substitute teacher by setting up and explaining the activity and expectations. Mason Dredla. Miss Werner's lunch fell on the floor and Mason picked it all up without even being asked. Hazel Lyon shared her snack with a friend who didn't have one. Sharing food, nice job. Jarrett Colmus for picking up a classmate's jacket. Wyatt Philpot for helping an injured friend outside. Grayson Gower for helping a friend at recess. Matthias Spulock for doing a great job at chapel. Melody R in preschool for doing a great job at chapel. And Aria Haney for helping Matthias and Melody do a great job at chapel. All right, help me thank these students. S.T. You guys can have a seat. And I think that is all we have for you today. Can we please wait quietly as our acolytes and ushers come up? I'm down in 